Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's good to see you. It's a Sunday. I don't normally make videos on a Sunday, but I woke up this morning. I've had a really good weekend of editing. I just didn't really have much on <laughs> this weekend, so I spent all of my Friday night and Saturday night and now Sunday morning editing, and I felt inspired. I want to make a video for you guys. I want to share this today, and it's a technique that I use in so many of my images, so I guess you guys need to know it. If I'm a new face, my name is Tom Nosky. I'm a photographer, digital artist, and filmmaker from Melbourne, Australia, who takes images like these. Today I'm going to be showing you a technique that I use to make images glow. It's a technique that I use in my images to make it just that little bit more dreamy than it already is. And it's a technique that I use all the bloody time. So I'm going to be showing you three ways that you can use this technique or three different methods to make objects glow in Photoshop. The first technique is if you've got an actual object or an element in your image that you want to make look more realistic or you want to make glow and just look that tiny bit more dreamy. The second technique is if you want to take something like an iPhone light and turn it into a spotlight in the woods. And the third technique is if you just want to make your entire image glow just a tiny bit more than it already does. So without further ado, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I know you guys like the snappy, quick and straight to it edits. But just quickly before we get started on this technique, I just need to preface this by saying that this technique is only as valuable as you set it up to be in camera. It's all very well and good to use the right techniques in Photoshop, but if you're not setting it up before, if you're not shooting for these images, it's not gonna work. So what I wanted to do for you guys is I wanted to actually show you a little bit of behind the scenes from the actual shoot that can give you guys an idea of how I actually created this effect. What we did is we used Astera Titan tubes that were given to me by Sun Studios, so special thanks to Sun Studios for giving me those lights to create the effect or create the light that is going to be used to make this look realistic. I'm going to jump to Tom a couple days ago. He's going to take you through the behind the scenes of this shoot and then we're going to come back into the computer and edit away and show you guys how I do it. So I'll see you guys or old Tom will see you guys in just a sec. <laughs> All inspired by Callop before you haters start saying we're copying. Yeah. All inspired by Callop. Huge shout out to Callop. But we're going to get both these lights. We're going to get Hayden here. I'm going to put some jellyfish in the shot and post. So we jellyfish? Can make it look like Hayden's reaching out to some jellyfish. Are you able to do that, yeah, jellyfishies? 100%. Oh, so you think you're better than all of us, do you? <laughs> huh? What's the go? Uh, can someone hold this for a sec? Yeah. Like here. How do you feel entitled enough so that someone can actually hold that for you? Huh? Well, that's why Ben's here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a prop man. Like, come on. <laughs> and you sort of like on one arm, like reaching for the lights, and I'll take the shot from there. And then in post, the light is going to act like the jellyfish light, and I'll replace those lights with jellyfish. Done. Done. Yeah. Alright, so we're here inside my computer, and we're going to be working on three images today. The first image is this image here of Hayden that we shot that you guys have just seen the behind the scenes for. This is the image completely edited. Let me just turn this back on here. This is the final image. So what I've done here is if I go back and toggle all these images on, here's the before and here's the after. Quite a dramatic change, but I'm going to show you guys how I did it. The second image we're going to be working on is this image here of Le Mans that again uses the Astera Titan tubes. Amazing, amazing image. Again, if I go here and toggle this one on and off, this is the before and this is the after. Not as a dramatic of a change. And the last image is this image here. And this image was the most dramatic of the three. That's the before and that's the after. So we're going to start over on this one and I'm going to show you how I made these jellyfish glow. I'm going to turn these layers off and I'm going to head over here and I'm just going to grab the initial jellyfish that I used. I'm going to select Command C. Always stay organized so I'm going to name this one Jellyfish Tutorial. And I'm going to put that jellyfish into the image. There we go. So I'm going to reposition this jellyfish to the spot that I want which is over here. Now it's entirely up to you how you do this. I actually went and masked out this jellyfish with the pen tool because it's a pretty basic shape. But if you can't do that, I would use the screen blend mode and then mask it as best you can. But it works, it definitely works better if you have a masked object. If I go and toggle this one on by itself, that's all it is. It's completely by itself, it's just an image and on screen. If I toggle it to normal, that's what it looks like normal. 
and then screen. So nine times out of 10, you will be using the screen blend mode for this one. So the way you do this technique is all you've got to do is duplicate your original layer. You're then going to go over to Gaussian Blur. If you don't have it toggled on, it's just over here in Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And then I'm going to add this one to about a 60% blur. And already you've seen just how much of a difference that's made from one. That's just one. What we're going to do again is we're going to add that again. Now I would recommend having all these layers on a smart layer so it makes the production process a lot quicker. It also means that you can go back after the fact and change the level of blur and this is going to be an absolute game changer. If you're not using smart layers, start using smart layers right now. I'm going to add this one to about 200 and there you go. You see it's starting to blur again. We're going to do it again. I'm going to add this one and we're going to go up to about 400. That's looking nice. Yeah, really, really nice. And then I reckon we could probably even add one more and maybe have this one at about 280, just so it's a little bit more of a blur closer to the jellyfish. Yeah, that's really, really nice. I like that, I like that a lot. Very, very, very simple technique has created that. If I go and I try and toggle, let's just select the blur layers. If I toggle the blur on and off, that's before the blur and that's after the blur. And you can see how much more realistic that makes it. Now again, like I said at the start of the video, this edit would not work if we hadn't have used the lights before to create that realistic effect. You can see the blue light that we've created here and the daylight that we've added on Hayden to make it look more realistic. The blue light casting on his face and then whatnot. You can create this after the fact, but believe me, it is much easier to do in camera. So that's the first technique. And then all I've done is duplicate that layer, merge them, turn them onto screen and then made them smaller a couple times for these so I'm going to turn off this one and we're going to go back to the original one there and that is the original image quite nice very simple technique very very easy to use now the most important one is because not everyone's got access to those big lights is this image here now all we've used to achieve this is a iPhone light yep that's Georgie holding her iPhone light in her hand and we've turned it into this now all I've done to do this is again it's important to have all of these layers in play like the color layers and whatnot if you want to see how I've created any of those you can go ahead up into the tags and all those videos will be there but for this one all I've done is I've gone into here and these are all my layers that I've used to create it specifically these layers here now if I toggle these on and off, let's turn that off. That's how much it's changed this image. If I turn this one on, straight away, that's made a ginormous impact on the image. And all these layers are, is they're individual groups with a color adjustment layer that's adding a little bit of warm color into the image. It's a curves adjustment layer, which is adding a bit of light. And then it is a levels adjustment layer that is doing the same thing, adding a little bit of light and also adding more into the whites to really make the center of that light pop a little bit more than it does. You want to throw those into a group and then all you're going to do is you're going to throw a mask onto the group, change that to black by going shift delete and selecting black and then using a brush all you're going to do is you're going to go in and let's duplicate this layer and do it from scratch again. Let's turn this one off and then let's go shift delete and black. Now all I've done for this is I've taken the brush tool, I've changed my opacity to about 10% and then I've gone and selected a white brush. Remember with masks, black deletes, white reveals. All I've done is I've gotten a mask that's slightly bigger. I've gone and I've clicked, gotten slightly bigger, clicked, slightly bigger, clicked, slightly bigger, clicked, slightly bigger, slightly bigger, and slightly bigger. And then once I'm at a point that I'm satisfied with, let's go actually a little bit larger than that. Clicked again, clicked again, and then I've done the opposite. So I've come back in and drawn it in. And what this will create is a realistic glow on the image. That's the reason why I've done that circle technique is because we want this point to be the brightest point. And this point has been affected every single time where it's slowly dispersing on each circle as it gets bigger and bigger. After that, all I've done is duplicate that layer as many times as I felt necessary for this image. In this case, it was three times all the exact same layers. I've also added a second one, which is the exact same thing with slightly different patterns as far as the color. And there, it's as simple as that. And there, it's as simple as that. That's how I took a phone light and made it glow like a spotlight in the middle of the woods. And the last technique that you can use for this is I'm going to go ahead and make this a 
convert to profile sRGB we're gonna make it a f completely flat image as if we were starting from fresh and this was the raw image that had come out of camera this is probably the easiest technique that you can use you're going to go to your initial layer you're gonna press command J to duplicate if you don't want to do that you can drag it over to this little guy here but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen and then I'm gonna go over here to filter blur Gaussian blur and then I'm gonna blur this as much as I see fit for me for this Let's maybe go 106, I reckon, for this. I'm gonna add a mask to the image. I'm gonna go Shift Delete to black. And then I'm gonna use the same technique that I used in the last one at about 10% complete softness. I'm just going to paint in where I want my image to glow a little bit more than the other parts. Just creating big circles with one clicks, going in painting in where I want my image to glow a little bit more and you'll see the difference that that's already created it just makes that light seem nice and soft and adds a nice little blur to the image to make it look just that little bit more dreamy than we were able to achieve straight out of camera so there you go those are the techniques that I use to create glow effects in my images I just want to say as well before we finish this out this image is entirely inspired by a creator that I seriously admire on Instagram. His name is Callop on Instagram. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, if you enjoyed any of the tutorials, these are not my ideas. I am not the brainchild of these images. These images were made popular by Callop on Instagram. So I'm going to have him tagged in the description. If you enjoyed these images, if you enjoyed this tutorial, I would highly recommend heading over to his Instagram and checking it out. He is an absolute god when it comes to these images. So we're going to jump out of my computer and I'll chat to you guys in a sec. So yeah, there you have it. That's how I create a glow effect in my images in Photoshop. It's a couple different methods that I use for each individual image because not all images are made equal. If you use any of these techniques, I want you to tag me in the comments. So go down into the comments and tag your Instagram accounts and let me know when you use this technique. I would really love to check out a few images in the community. I'm also going to start now. We're going to start question of the day on this channel so if you want to be featured in the next video or maybe a week from now video because I've got a couple videos coming out this week but if you want to be featured ask a question in the comments below and I'll feature you in the next video so if you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed any of the videos I've been putting out I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe but as always it's entirely up to you and I'll see you guys in the next one